if you ask me about my favorite image editor, the answer every time is going to be GIMP. It's an incredible... It's an incredible project and a mainstay in the FOSS world. But with that being said, it doesn't mean it's perfect. And I'm not saying that because it's not exactly the same as Photoshop. I say that because there are a lot of effects that users would expect to be in a modern image editor that are frankly missing. Things like bevel, inner glow, outline. Some of these can be replicated relatively easily, but aren't exactly convenient to do, along with more complex operations like a neon border, color trails, action lines, and a bunch of other things. But here's the thing, all of those demos I just showed you were made in GIMP and were made with a filter. And all of this was made possible thanks to the GEGL or Geggle plugins made by Linux Beaver. And the ones that I showed you are a very, very small fraction of what's available. Even the ones listed on this main page are only like five or six of them. This is all of the filters we have. All of these files are individual filters many of which might be completely useless for what you're trying to do, but many of them are just things that you'd expect to always be in GIMP. Now, just quickly before we get into how to install and use these plugins, let's briefly talk about what a Geggle or GEGL plugin actually is. So Geggle stands for Generic Graphics Library. You probably notice a missing letter, so why is it not GGL? I don't know, it really doesn't matter. Go and ask the devs. Now, Geggle was not made only for use in GIMP. GIMP right now is just sort of the driving factor behind its development. It was originally developed for experimental tool development, since then, growing into this incredibly powerful framework, sort of changing what's possible in GIMP. And you can go and experiment with Geggle directly without even using one of these extensions. There is a function in GIMP called Geggle Graph, allowing you to write Geggle directly. All it is, is combining a lot of simpler effects into these more complex effects. So in this case, it's using some rotation, some color overlay, some Gaussian blur, embossing, medium blur, and even some drop shadows, allowing you to go from this very simple image into this far more complex design. But unless you're a developer, you probably don't feel like writing Geggle directly. What would be much nicer is putting this in a form where GIMP can expose a bunch of sliders, making it much easier to tweak things. And that's exactly what these Geggle plugins do. And doing things with Geggle generally leads to much faster previews. So a lot of the important filters in GIMP are being migrated over to Geggle, it's also paving the way for non-destructive filters in a future version of GIMP. So then, how do we use them? Well, first thing we need to do is actually install them. Luckily, doing so is very simple. Now, you could go to the individual repos, grabbing the plugins you want, going and compiling them. I don't feel like doing that. What I'd much rather do is just download them pre-compiled. Luckily for us, the dev does provide a link right here to go and do so. Go and save that, and you're already halfway there. Step one, unzip the archive. Very important step, it will not work unless you go and do so. Now from here, what we're gonna do is take that unzipped folder and go inside of it. If you are using Linux, which I presume most people watching this channel are, grab the binaries from the Linux folder, not the Windows folder. They will not work otherwise. Grab all of the .so files, and if you want to, grab the readme, if you don't care about the readme. If you want some extra effects, there are a couple inside of this folder that Linux Beaver didn't make, but did feel like bundling alongside these. But I'm going to ignore them. Let's go and copy these. And where we're going to take these depends on whether you're using the flat pack or the native package. I'll do the native package first. What we need to do is go into the share folder and find a folder called GEGL-0.4. Inside of that, there should be a plugins folder. And if you haven't installed any plugins, the folder will be empty. All we do is just dump those files in there and you're good to go. Slightly different for the flat pack, 
basically just as easy. Go into your .var folder, the app folder, go into your GIMP folder, go into the data folder, GEGL-0.4, plugins, put them in there, and you're good to go. And if you're using Windows, the path is a little bit different, but still pretty easy. App data, local, GEGL-0.4, and in the plugins directory. And then make sure, okay, they will not work if you don't do this, close GIMP and then reopen it. If you do not close GIMP and reopen it, it will not work, the plugins will not be there, and do not complain to me when things are missing. Now, how would we make something beautiful like this? Let's go and add an outline to Tux, for example. If we go to Tools, and then GEGL Operation, and then the drop down, this is gonna have all of the plugins we just added. You are going to notice some things that you didn't explicitly add. Some things are just in the list by default, they're just pre-installed. In our case, what we want is Gaggle Effects. And from here, we can go and change the outline opacity, we can change a glow opacity, all of the different settings we want with it. Now, some of the effects, this one doesn't really matter, but some of the effects are going to have specific settings to go and read. Let's just go and set this first, and then I'll show you. Let's set the color here to, I don't know, red, sure and then go OK, and look at that. Wow, we now have an outline. So one example of the pay attention to what's going on is the bevel. So once again, tools, Gaggle operation, and then let's select bevel. It's not going to work at all by default, because as it says here, use the multiply blend mode. By default, it's set to replace. If we go and change this to multiply, now it's going to work the way a bevel would typically work. It doesn't look super great on an image like this, but if you were to use it on text, maybe you get a better effect. I don't know. It still looks kind of neat though. Also something really neat is due to the way that text is handled in GIMP, if you make a spelling mistake in the text or maybe you don't like the effect, you can get rid of it by just modifying the text. But on that effect, even though... To get the result it says on the tin, you want to pay attention to the instructions it gives you, like say with the inner glow. In this case, it says for this filter, you need to use a normal layer rather than replace. In some cases though, maybe the effect you get from doing it wrong actually is what you want to see. Do what it says on the tin if you want to have exactly what you're expecting from the name. Do it wrong if you want to get something really neat that isn't exactly obvious that it's possible. One thing I would highly recommend is if you're using this feature frequently, either go and set a hotkey for it, just so you don't have to go into this menu every single time, or go and add it into your toolbar on the side. The way you add it here is we go down to Edit, Preferences, and then go down to where it says toolbox, and then in this list, find where it says Gaggle operation. Go and put it anywhere in the list you want to, could be at the top, could be at the bottom, whatever you feel like using. Earlier when I said that a lot of effects you see are probably going to be useless to you, I said that because a lot of them are kinda useless to me. Many of these I will probably never have a single reason for using, and I'm probably going to end up deleting many of them. But if what you're doing, some of them make sense. Like, I don't know, uh, Fractal Explorer, for example. Maybe you need this one. Go and keep it. Or maybe you care about, I don't know, uh, Electricity over Alpha. Go and keep it. Keep around what makes sense for whatever you're trying to do. But go and experiment with the plugins, because maybe you'll realize that one of them that seemed kinda useless actually makes sense in a certain weird edge case, possibly if you even use it wrong. So go and check out Linux Beaver's extensions. The GitHub is gonna be linked in the description down below. He's probably going to make more of them in the future, but the basic operations you'd expect to be there, like bevel, inner glow, things like that, are now all available, and from my experience, work pretty well. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That's gonna be it for me, and if you like the video, go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become 
one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Silly Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.